Are you excited? Tayo po ba ay excited? Amen? Alam niyo po, dapat po patuloy po tayong ma-excite sa mga gagawin po ng Panginoon. Kahapon po ay uh, pull pack po ang atin pong schedule ng mga ministries na meron po tayo dito sa CRCC. So yesterday po ay nagkaroon po ng uh, outing fellowship ang mga mga ushers, ang ushering ministry. At uh, nagkaroon po ng pagkakataon na nakasama po kami doon. And then after that, dito naman po sa atin pong uh, church building ay nagkaroon po ng meeting ang mga young professionals. Praise God! At uh, nakaset up na po sila and they are so excited. That is why we are anticipating a lot of great things. At ito po ay mangyayari sa mga ilang linggo, ilang buwan mula ngayon. Tanungin mo nga ang katabi mo, are you excited? Hindi lang po yon, hindi lang po yung OT, yung overtake, yung mga young professionals, pero kahapon po ay nagkaroon din ng pagkakataon na makapag-meet ang mga kabataan. Pwede ko bang marinig ang mga kabataan? Ayan. Nakaset na din po ang uh, ilang mga meetings ng uh, mga young people from the campus ministry, from the community, at may mga ilang po kaming napag-usapan. So, Talaga pong ano, exciting yung mga darating na mga panahon, no? mga araw at mga buwan uh, sa pagtat, uh, sa uh, ito pong 2014, ito pong year 2014. And at the same time, of course, kahapon din po ay uh, nag-enjoy po ang bawat isa sa presensya ng Panginoon sa atin pong um, prayer gathering, sa atin pong prayer night. So, we hope na makasama po namin kayo every Saturday sa atin pong prayer night. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, make yourself available. Okay, so this morning, tayo po ay magtutungo sa mensahe ng Panginoon para sa bawat isa. I believe we are excited to receive the Word of God, God's revelation to us. Ang title po ng atin pong topic, The Word of Life. The Word of Life. Tayo po ay naniniwala na ang salita po ng Diyos ay nagbibigay ng buhay. Not just the written word, but the living word of God. At ito po yung atin pong tut- uh, pupuntahan ngayong umagang ito, babasahin po natin. Right now, we will go to the book of John. Pupuntahan po natin ito at pag-aaralan natin ang John chapter 1. And uh, gusto ko pong magbigay ng konting background sa book of John. Ito po ay isinulat ng isang apostle. One of the original. One of the twelve. At hindi po ito basta-bastang disciple. Ang human author po nito ay uh, one of the closest or most closest to our Lord. Siya po ang nagsulat ng, ng Gospel of John at ilang mga aklat pa ng 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation. The last book of the Bible. Alam niyo po, pag sinabi po natin book of John, may kakaibang touch po yan. Kasi yung nagsulat po nito, hindi po katulad nung ibang mga book of the gospel. Because when you read the book of Matthew, you read through the eyes of a devout disciple. Actually, Matthew is also one of, one of the apostles. Yung uh, another gospel, yung, uh, the book of Mark and the book of Luke, kapag binasa po natin ito, we read through the eyes of a dedicated believers. We know that they are dedicated. Kaya lang po, ang kanila pong mga isinulat, ito po ay galing sa mga eyewitnesses, testimonies of eyewitnesses. Pero pag sinabi po natin the Gospel of John, ito po ay isinulat ng isang apostles very dear to Jesus. A disciple who reclined upon the chest of the Lord. Kaya nga po ang tawag sa kanya ay John the Beloved. Actually, he was one of the inner circle together with James and Peter. 
So may kakaibang touch po ang Book of John kapag ito po ay ating binasa. That is why kapag may mga new believers at tayo po ay nagre-recommend sa kanila na magbasa ng Bible, if you are if you are new in the faith and if you want to read the Bible, ang recommendation po start in the Book of John. Ma, parang alam niyo po ang Bible ay hindi po ito katulad ng mga ordinaring mga books. If you will read the book, magsisimula ka sa pinakasimula. Hindi ba? Kung ikaw ay magbabasa ng libro. Sino po sa inyo pag nagbasa ng libro, nagsisimula ka sa dulo? Wala naman po, hindi ba? At kung magbabasa ka naman sa gitna, aba ay eh, mukhang marami kang mamimiss. Pero iba po ang Biblia. Because the Bible is composed of 66 books. 66 books. So, mini library po ang pinag-uusapan natin. That is why every time na may mga new believers, new in the faith, nare-recommend po natin ang Book of John. Meron pong kakaibang touch ang Book of John. So, ito po ang ating pupuntahan sa umaga pong ito. The Book of John. And I want you to, I want you to know na nung sinulat po ito ni John, hindi po niya ito isinulat in a chronological biography of the life of Christ. Hindi po yan ang kanyang purpose. Meron pong ibang purpose si John, bakit niya sinulat ang Gospel of John na mamaya po ay atin pong uh, mauunawaan. But let us now proceed in John chapter 1, starting verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Verse 3, Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of men. Verse, John chapter 20, pagtungo po tayo sa John chapter 20, verse 30. Para po mas ma-appreciate natin ang sinulat ni John. Ano ba yung purpose? Bakit ba to sinulat ni John? Ang book of John in particular. Yung pong binasa natin, ito lamang po yung introduction ng aklat na ito. Pero ano po ba yung purpose? Bakit niya ito isinulat? Ang sabi po dito sa verse 30, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of His disciples which are not recorded in this book. Marami pa palang nasulat. Marami pa palang nangyari. Rather, may mga nangyari pa po. Pero hindi na daw po ito naisulat. Hindi na daw po ito nai-record. Hindi na daw po ito naisama. Verse 31, But these are written, the book of John, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. So dito po sa John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31, binibigyan po tayo ng Bible ng idea, bakit ba naisulat ang Gospel of John? And because of that, pag binalikan po natin ang John chapter 1, mas ma-appreciate po natin ano ba yung layunin ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ni John the Beloved. Ayon po dito sa John chapter 20, meron pong two primary purpose of the book of John. Ito po yung layunin according to these verses. Unang-una po, ang sabi po dito that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Ito po yung unang dahilan kung bakit po isinulat ni John the Beloved, Apostle John, the most closest to our Lord Jesus Christ, this gospel, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Ang pangalawa pong reason, that by believing, you might have life. Zoe, sa salitang Greek, ang ibig pong sabihin, eternal or everlasting life. So palag, ito po ang ilalagay natin sa ating isipan sa umaga pong ito, sa atin pong pag-aaral ng uh, mga talata po na atin pong binasa. So meaning, 
kung ang isa sa purpose po ng pagkasulat ni John the Beloved ng Gospel of John that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, meaning, meron pong nais na sagutin si Apostle John sa isip at puso po natin. Meron siyang nais na maunawaan po natin. Ano po ito? Masagot po ang tanong, Who is Jesus? For you, who is Jesus? Ito po ay nais na sagutin ng Gospel of John. Kaya nga po, we are encouraging new, new, new in the faith, new believers to read the Gospel of John. Bakit? Kasi ipinakikilala dyan si Jesus. Sinasagot yung tanong, Who is Jesus? Para sa iyo, sino si Jesus? Pwede mo ba tanungin ang iyong katabi? Para sa iyo, sino si Jesus? Maaring sumagot ka ngayon ng mga stock knowledge, head knowledge, na mga natutunan mo siguro kung sino si Jesus. Pero kung ang pagbabatayan ay ang iyong buhay, para sa iyo, sino ba si Jesus? Ito po ang nais ipahayag ng aklat na ating binabasa, the book of John. Meron siyang gustong ipakilala sa atin. Kaya nga nung sinimulan ng aklat na ito, Ang, kany- ang unang talata ang sabi, in the beginning. Sabi natin, in the beginning. Saan mo maririnig yung mga, pa- mga salita na yan? In the beginning. Besides the book of John. If you are reading the Bible, sa book of Genesis, aba, ito, ay, ito yung unang kapahayagan. Kung paanong ito yung unang pahayag ng, ng John chapter 1, ito din ang unang kapahayagan Nandang Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning. Meaning, dito ay ipinapahayag ni, ni John the Beloved yung pinagmula ng ating Panginoon. He is not, he is not a creation. He, he is not a creature. But He is the Creator. Ito po ang nais na ipahayag ni John. Jesus is the Word. Ang sabi doon, in the beginning was the Word. Jesus is the Word. He is not a Word, but the Word. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Pastor, what do you mean? That He is not a Word, but the Word. Ang sabi po nung, nung, ano, nung John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. He is the revelation of God. Kaya po ginamit ni John the Beloved, sabi niya, in the beginning was the Word. Because Jesus is the revelation. Siya po ang kapahayagan. Meaning, if you want to know God, pinapahayag ng Panginoon ang kanyang sarili sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. O, kung nais natin na mas makilala pa ang Panginoon ng mas malalim, Mas maunawaan natin sino ang Panginoon, sino ang Diyos. Ipinapahayag ng Panginoon ang kanyang sarili sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. At meron pong um, sinabi ang Biblia in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Marami pong pagkakataon, pinapahayag ng Panginoon ang kanyang sarili sa pamamagitan ng mga propeta, sa pamamagitan ng mga tagadala, ng mensahe, ng salita ng Diyos. In verse 2, but in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom He made the universe. Alam niyo po, sa atin pong panahon ngayon, ipinapahayag na ng Panginoon ang kanyang sarili sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. Ang ibig sabihin po nito, ang ibig sabihin ganito, kung hindi mo kilala si Jesus, hindi mo kilala ang Panginoon. Hindi mo kilala ang Diyos. Kaya pala sabi ni Jesus, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Ang ibig sabihin, kung nais mong makilala ang Diyos, 
kilalanin mo si Jesus dahil ipinapahayag ng Diyos ang kanyang sarili sa pamamagitan ni Jesus. Kung ang nais mo lang makilala ay ang Ama, it, it is impossible to know the Father apart from Christ. Kaya sabi ni Jesus, apart from me, apart from me, you cannot be with the Father. Ang kailangan po natin makilala si Jesus, ang kailangan po natin ay magkaroon ng personal na karanasan, personal relationship with Christ. Kaya po ang sabi ng John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. Jesus is the Word. Pag sinabi po natin, Jesus is the Word according to John chapter 1, ano pong ibig sabihin nito? Unang-una po, sa John chapter 1, ang sinasabi po dito, the Word is eternal. Sabi po, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning. In the beginning of what? In the beginning of the creation? I believe, ang sinasabi po dito ng Bible, in the beginning, the Word was there. Hindi po sinasabi na in the beginning, the Word was created. Hindi po nito sinasabi na in the beginning, doon lang nag-appear yung Word, which is Jesus Christ. Hindi po. Ang sinasabi dito ng John chapter 1, in the beginning, He is already there. Nandun na siya. Meaning, the Word is eternal. Sino po yung tinutukoy dito? Jesus. He is eternal. Actually, ang tinuturo po ng Biblia, the Word or Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. Look at Revelations chapter 1, verse 17. When I saw Him, according to John, siya din po ang author nito, I fell at His feet as though dead. Then He placed His right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and Hades. Wow. What a proclamation. I am the first and the last. Alam niyo ibig sabihin niyan? Ang ibig sabihin ni Jesus, I am eternal. Walang pinagmulan, walang katapusan. And again, in the book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 12, ang sabi po dito ni Jesus, Behold, I am coming soon. Alam niyo po ba na may tinatawag na second coming? Alam niyo ba kung bakit may second coming? Kasi may first coming. Ang first coming, ang tawag natin dyan, Christmas. Hinihintay ng mga Hudyo yung first coming at dumating, nangyari ang first coming. Ipinanganak ang misaya sa pamamagitan ng tinatawag na virgin birth. Ang tawag doon, first coming. Pinangako ng Diyos ang first coming nangyari. Merong tinatawag na second coming. Nangako muli ang Panginoon na merong second coming. At dahil nangyari ang first coming, mangyayari din ang second coming. Ang sabi dito ni Jesus, Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. And look at verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. That is why nung sinabi ni John, in the beginning, ang ibig sabihin, ang ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo ay walang pinagmulan. Bago pa man lalangin. Kasi po yung in the beginning na yon ang konteksto nun ay katulad ng konteksto ng, ng Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning. The beginning of what? The beginning of creation. Nagbago pa man likain ang lahat. Andun na ang Panginoon. Andun na yung word. Andun na si Jesus nag-exist eh, nag na siya. 
wala siyang pinagbulan. The Word is eternal. Next, pag sinabi pong the Word, sa John chapter 1, the Word is in relationship to God. The Word is in relationship to God. Ang sabi po dito, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. At ang ibig pong sabihin itong, the Word was with God, ang ibig pong sabihin, in agreement. Meron silang relationship. Alam mo, if you are not in agreement with someone, hindi ka tatagal. Maghihiwalay kayo ng landas. Amen? Why? Because you are always in disagreement. Sino dito may kaibigan ka palagi mong kasama? Maaring hindi palaging in agreement. May mga time na may disagreement kayo. But I believe, mas marami ang pagkakataon na you are in agreement. Kaya nga kayo magkasama. Nag-agree ka agad kayo na, na magtatagpo kayo, magkikita kayo at nasa isang lugar. Eh kung disagreement ka agad, sabi nung isa, magkita tayo one. Sabi nung isa, magkita tayo five. Hindi one, hindi five. Hindi kayo magkikita. You cannot be together because you are in disagreement. Pero ang sabi po dito, the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. Isipin po ninyo yun, they are in agreement for eternity. They have good relationship. Kaya nga po, ang sabi ng Panginoong Iso Kristo in Matthew chapter 11, verse 27, sabi ni Jesus, all things had been committed to be by my Father. And look at this. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And those whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Alam niyo kung bakit? Because they have close, intimate relationship. Kaya nga po, ang, hinihin, ang, ang nais din ng Panginoon sa atin, to have intimate relationship with Him. Kasi sa Panginoon, pag sinabing relationship, it's intimate. Makilala natin siya. At tayo ay Kanyang kilala. Ganun po ang relationship nung Word at ni God according. Particularly, the Father. Dito po sa John chapter 1. The Word is in relationship to God. Another thing, pag sinabi po the Word, ang sabi po dito, the Word is God. He is in relationship. Meaning, pag sinabi po ganun, pinapakita na ito ay two distinct person. Amen? Pero dito po, tinuturo din that the Word is God. Although two distinct person, the Word is God. This is not, this is not polytheism. Hindi po ito maraming Diyos o dalawang Diyos. Ang itinuturo po dito, two different person but one God. The Word is God. In Philippians chapter 2, Verse 5, ang sabi po dito, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who being in very nature, God. What is His nature? He is God. Did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made Himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. The Word, of God, the word is God. Jesus is God. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, Jesus is God. Ito po ang itinuturo ng Biblia. Hindi mo na nga kailangang interpret. Actually, ang sabi po ng book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 13, While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Sabihin mo nga ulit sa katabi mo, Jesus is God. Ang atin pong Panginoong Iso Kristo, ito po yung revelation si John chapter 1. Ano ba yung purpose ni John? So that you might believe 
in Jesus Christ. As the Son of God. Kaya pinapakilala niya. He is eternal. He is in relationship to God. And He is God. The Word is God. And because He is God, ang tinuturo pa po dito, the Word is the Creator. Ang sabi po ng verse 3, Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has, that has been made. Alam niyo po, may isa lang Creator. Kapag ang pinag-uusapan po natin ay Creator of all things. The, oh, the Supreme Creator. Iisa lang po yan, God. At dito po sinasabi that the Word is the Creator. Ang sabi po, through Him, all things were made. And without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Why? Because He is the Creator. At ito po ay sinuportahan ng book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 written by Apostle Paul. And ang sabi po, for by Him all things were created. Sabi nga natin, all things. Wow. For by Him all things were created. Things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Ayan pala yung creation ni God. Si God pala ang create niya, hindi lang yung mga visible. Pati mga invisible. Sabi nga natin, invisible. Naalala ko noon, nagmi-minister kami, sabi nung isang, ano, isang youth, hindi ako naniniwalang may Diyos. Sabi ko, bakit naman? Kasi, hindi ako naniniwala sa mga hindi ko nakikita. At dahil hindi ko nakikita ang Diyos, hindi ako naniniwala sa Kanya. Sabi ko sa Kanya, kung ganyan ang prinsipyo mo, ang ibig sabihin, hindi ka naniniwala sa hangin. Nakikita mo ba ang hangin? Sabi niya, ibang usapan yan, pastor. O sige, ibig sabihin, hindi ka naniniwala sa frequency, na nag exist ang frequency. Hindi ka naniniwala na nag exist ang mga wave na hindi natin nakikita. Alam nyo ba ang Panginoon? Siya ang creator ng mga bagay na visible and invisible, na tayo ay nabubuhay sa mundo ng mga visibles and invisibles. Amen? May mga bagay na hindi kayang makita ng naked eye, pero da- hindi dahil hindi nakikita, hindi nag exist At may nag-create niyan ng lahat ng yan, the visible and the invisible. Sino ito? The Word. Because the Word is the Creator. He is the Creator. And He is not just the Creator, the Word became flesh, became human. Ang sabi ng verse 14, the Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only who, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Anong ibig sabihin nito? The Word is God, according to John chapter 1. And the Word is also human. Because this God became flesh. Kaya pala sabi ng Philippians chapter 2, our attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made Himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. Meaning itong pinag-uusapan natin na Diyos na ito, hindi lang siya Diyos. Human din siya. Because he decided to become human. Siya ay nag-anyo, siya ay nagkatawang tao. So ang pinag-uusapan natin dito na Jesus, na pinapakilala ni John, yung pinag-uusapan natin na dito na Word, He is God. Sabihin mo nga, the Word is God. Sabihin mo, the Word is human. Meaning, Jesus is 100% God and 100% man. Kaya pag may nagsabi sa iyo, Jesus is human, pwede mong sabihin, I agree with you 100%. Yes. 
Jesus is human. 100%. But the Bible is also teaching us in John chapter 1 that the Word, who is God, the Word, who is with God, the Word became human. The Word became flesh. Alam nyo po, itong pinag-uusapan natin na word na ito, hindi siya pwedeng mamagitan sa Diyos at sa tao kung siya ay Diyos lang. At hindi niya din kayang mamagitan between God and man kung siya ay tao lang. Kinakailangan meron siyang dalawang nature. So that he can represent both God and human. At ang sabi po ng Bible, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. May isa lang tagapamagitan. Bakit niya kinakaya yon? Kasi meron siyang dalawang nature. Human and divine. Naalala ko po ang isang kwento ng dalawang tribe. Itong dalawang tribe na ito, they are unrich people group. And they are very barbaric. Naglalaban ito, nagpapatayan ito, hindi magkasundo yung dalawang tribe na ito, dalawang uh, group na ito. Nagpapatayan, magmula pa nung simula. Sila ay matinding magkaaway. Itong dalawang tribe na ito. At may distinction between them. Yung unang tribe, malalaman mo kung sino sila Kasi ang kanilang mga buhok ay kulot. May itim ang kanilang mga balat. Pero ang kanilang buhok, bland. Nakita na kayo ng ganon? Iba to, unique. Kaya madali mong ma-identify ang grupo nila. Maitim ang balat, kulot ang buhok, pero bland. Kakaiba. Yung another group naman, ang kanilang kulay ay itim din. Ang kanilang buhok ay kulot pero hindi bland. Pero malalaman mo, yung kanilang grupo, kasi ang kulay ng mata nila ay green. Kaya pag nakita mo yan, dumilat sa'yo, kitang-kita mo kagad, verde yung kulay ng itim ng kanilang mata. At itong dalawang tribe na ito ay palaging naglalaban from the very beginning. until dumating ang pagkakataon na yung hari ng grupo na bland ang buhok na kulot, nagkaroon ng anak na lalaki. At yung another group na ang kulay ng mata ay green, nagkaroon naman ng anak na babae. At lingid sa kanilang kaalaman, nagkakaroon ng pagkakataon na yung prinsipe at yung prinsesa ng dalawang grupo ay nagtatagpo. At sila ay na-develop. At hulaan nyo ano ang nangyari sa kwento. Sila ay nagkaibigan. Kaya lang, ayaw ito ng kanilang mga magulang. Pero alam nyo, dahil sa kanilang pag-iibigan, alam nyo nangyari? Itong dalawang ito, sila ay tumakas. Ang tawag natin dyan sa mga Pilipino ay ano? Nagtanan. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mo, baka may katabi kang kabataan. Huwag mong gagawin yan. Sabihin mo nga sa katabi mong kabataan ngayon, hindi na uso yan. Kung ikaw magtatanan, wala ka sa uso, ang baduy mo. Tapos na yung panahon na ganon. Wala na yun. Okay? Makipag-usap ka ng maayos sa magulang mo. Okay? So ang ginawa nitong dalawang ito, nagtanan sila. Lumayo sila, nagpakalayo sila. At alam nyo, dumating sila sa pagkakataon na sila ay nakarating sa city. Namuhay sila doon, nag-adjust sila sa buhay ng syudad, at sila ay natuto. And they found out kung ano yung nangyayari sa kanilang pamilya. At nais nila na sila ay makabalik upang ayusin ang kanilang pamilya, kaya lang natatakot sila. And because of that fear, lumipas ang panahon ng maraming taon, sila ay nagkaroon ng anak na lalaki. At yung kanilang anak na lalaki, unti-unti nang ito ay uh, nagbinata, ito ay naging adult. 
at ikinwento nila ang kwento ng kanilang pamilya. Alam niyo yung anak nila nagkaroon ng burden, nagkaroon ng desire. Sabi niya, babalik ako doon sa ating pinagmulan at aayusin ko yung matagal ng hidwaan. So ang ginawa niya, siya ay, nag, na, siya ay ano, uh, nagtungo, inayo, nag, nag-ayos siya, inayos niya ang kanyang sarili, nagtungo siya sa bundok para puntahan yung kanilang tribe. Ang una niyang pinuntahan, yung tribe ng kanyang tatay. Ano ang kulay ng buhok? Blan. Nung parating pa lang siya, nakita na siya nung mga, nung mga grupo. Alam niyo ba na siya ay tinanggap? Dahil nakita ka agad na ang kulay ng kanyang buhok ay ano? Bland na kulot. Buti hindi siya nagpariband. Tinanggap siya kasi nakita, mamalayo pa lang nakita na yung kulay ng buhok. Yung kulay ng kanyang balak, tinanggap siya. At pagkatapos noon, nung nagkaroon siya ng relationship doon, pumunta naman siya, naglakbay siya ng malayo, pinuntahan niya yung kabilang tribo. At habang papalapit siya, nakita siya, kaya lang medyo natakot sila kasi nakita bland ang buhok niya. Kaya lang, nung papalapit na siya, nakita ang kanyang mata. Ang kulay ng mata niya, green. At dahil doon siya ay tinanggap nung tribo na ito. And to make the long story short, because of him being the bridge, being the mediator na parehas tinanggap ng mga bland ang buhok at green ang mata, nagkaroon ng reconciliation. There is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. Why? Because he is both God. Pag tinitingnan siya ng Dios, well, he is God. The Word is God. Pag tinitingnan siya ng tao, he is human. He can represent both God and man. Pwede bang palakpakan natin ang ating panginoong Jesus Kristo? Praise God for the Word. So ito po yung pinag-usapan natin. The Word is eternal. The Word is in relationship to God. The Word is God. The Word is the Creator. The Word became human. Ito po yung pinapahayag ng John chapter 1 verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, verse 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. Because He is the Creator. And the Bible said, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory. The glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Ang sabi po ng, 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 ano, ng purpose, bakit sinulat ang book of John? So that you might believe who is Jesus? He is the Word. He is eternal. He is in relationship to God. He is God. He is the Creator. And He became human so that He can be our mediator. The only mediator between God and men. Alam niyo kung bakit niya ito isinulat? Bakit ito ipinapahayag sa atin? ni John the Beloved so that you might believe in Him. And if you will believe in Him, there is life in Him. Kaya nga po ang sabi ng verse 12, Yet, to all who received Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. Are you willing to believe Him. That He is eternal. The Word is eternal. He is the Creator. He is God. And He became human. Before we end this morning, ito po ang sabi ni, ng 1 John chapter 5. Same human author, the Apostle John, ang sabi niya po, anyone who believes in the Son of God has this testimony in his heart. 
Anyone who does not believe God has made him out to be a liar because he has not believed the testimony God has given about his son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And this life is in religion. Amen? No? And this life is in doing good works. Amen? No? And this life is in His Son. Look at verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Alam niyo po, tinuturo po sa atin ang salita ng Diyos, this is all, not all about religion. This is all about a person. The difference of Christianity to many religions, ang tinuturo ng mga religions, teachings and philosophies of their leader. Alam niyo po, ang, ang ini-introduce sa atin ng Christianity, the person of Jesus Christ. If you want to know the teachings, if you want to know the philosophies, you must first believe, receive the person. The person of Jesus Christ. If you believe Him, you will be saved by Him. And if you are saved, you will serve Him. Amen? Do you believe Him? Are you saved? Are you serving Him? Because if you are saved, you will serve Him. Amen? Parang napakawala mo na bang utang na loob? Niligtas ka? Di ba ang buhay mo supposed to be ay sa kapahamakan na eternal destruction? Kasi ang sabi dito ng Bible, He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. But because of the Son, because of Jesus, merong kaligtasan, may buhay na walang hanggan. If you are saved right now, I am encouraging you and I am also challenging you to serve that Savior, that Redeemer, that person who gave His life for you so that you will have eternal life. But if you are here right now, naging religious ka lang, sandali lang, hindi yan ang sinasabi ng Bible. Ang tinuturo ng Bible, you have to make Jesus, receive Him in your life, and make Him the Lord and the Savior.